Holy Spirit. Amen. At the end of the semester, we have to thank God for all the graces we receive, especially the light and the coming from the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now in the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, seat of wisdom, in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So for this class, uh, I will use the text of uh, Michael Takulu, but I, you can have some very good references in social agenda, especially 311 to 323, and a compendium, compendium especially those three in the middle here. Um, <coughs> The text here is for uh, uh, future um, for student, university student who will work as a volunteer in many countries. And that text is for me is very, very good to explain what is globalization. So I call, first I, he quotes the text of Pope Benedict XVI in John Cyclical, Deus Caritas S and God is love to introduce the problem of globalization. Even Pope Francis in Vangeli Gaudi, Gaudium speaks about that also. So in today's complex situation, not only because of the growth of a globalized economy, the church's social decree has become a set of fundamental guidelines. The church offers guidelines because the problem is universal and concerning uh, Catholic and also all the, all the people, huh? offering approaches to, uh, that are valid even beyond the confines of the church, and continue in face of the ongoing development of this guideline, need to be addressed in the context of dialogue with all those seriously concerned for humanity and for the world in which we live. So the church uh, give us some information about how we should and, uh, look at the globalization. As a teacher of philosophy social, uh, and social ethics, I will try first to understand what is the phenomenon of globalization. I don't speak as an economist, I speak as a philosopher. The first, we can distinguish four level, four kinds of globalization. Well, the first that is clearly apparent is economic. And you go to any port in the United States, in Canada, in, in China, even in Vietnam, I'm sure you will see ships from many countries. Container coming from many countries. You have an economic channel. You, 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 you buy, it is written Bangladesh, made in China, made in the US, etc. So that is the, the, the first the evident mark of a a globalization, we see that in our economy. Money, for example. Understander is American money now, US dollar. Uh, the, the, and the uh, international uh, market uh, uh, we have in New York, the Wall, Wall Street. It is a place where all the countries, all the companies, they can uh, change, they can. Uh, the market is international. Well, that is a fact. What are the roots of that? The first root is. The, the, the discovery of the 15th century. I will say the, the one who initiated uh, the initiated globalization is Marco Polo. You know Marco Polo? Yeah. The Italian who went to China. China. And after that, they began to have a, co a trade between China and Venice, huh? China and Italy and China and Europe. Huh? Secondly, the Industrial Revolution. We said that at the beginning when we study uh, liberalism. I had the, the discovery of the power of steam uh, was able to, uh, the power of steam, able to uh, change the economy. Uh, so the, the power of steam after that, the, the oil, the discovery of oil, the gas, all those things changed the economy. And a third, a third one, it is the transportation. 
to before to try to pass through ocean uh, Atlantic Ocean that took 30 days up to 60 days, 30 to 60. Now we can by plane in six hours and a half cut from Paris to New York. That is huge change, huh? and because of that we can trade. We can call it, uh, London, we can call it Paris, we can call it Moscow. We see we we need uh, 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 such a thing. And they put that, FedEx, you know, FedEx goes to the airport, put that on the plane, and a few hours after you have that in the United States or in other country. And finally, uh, recently, especially since 1990, 1990, when the Iron Curtain fell down, huh, we have now exchanged, a lot of exchange with uh, Russia, of course, it is no more USSR, Russia, and we have exchange with India and with Asian country. So that is, is, a, is a phenomenon that uh, affects everyone. And between countries, we have, for example, the United Europe, have a, and we have here uh, NAFTA, uh, the, the, an argument between Canada, United States, and Mexico. Huh? We call it that North American Free Trade Agreement. And if, it, if I come back in September, it is because of that, <laughs> of that agreement. Secondly, <laughs> political. Uh, political, and that influence we must recognize since 19, after the Second War. Before the Second War, it was more uh, the influence of Great Britain and France, a little bit of Italy, but now the influence is especially the United States after the war, <coughs> the Second War. And in that, uh, the modern Anglo Saxon that made the United States and, and Brit uh, British, huh? uh, Great Britain and the British Commonwealth, they, they, they gave a model of, the, of government we call democracy. <laughs> Uh, and and that, that model uh, is exported in many countries. And in many countries, people fight against the old regime to attain a new regime uh, uh, that they call democracy. That is a political globalization. Uh, so democracy is presented everywhere as the model uh, of... Uh, uh, of uh, living in the country. <clears throat> and that is based also on the uh, 1948 uh, Universal Declaration of the Human Rights. In fact, the United Nations are a tool, uh, are, uh, were and are, uh, still are a tool, powerful tool for political globalization. You go to New York and on the same uh, same all, you have people from all the countries and they can discuss and they can uh, see what they want to see. Huh? Okay? Um, <coughs> so before it was, for example, the British imperialism or French imperialism, it was, uh, but that changed uh, with, uh, especially with 1958, 1960, when um, the majority of colonies in Africa and many countries they were uh, detached from the the colonial power. Huh? Now that is a fact. And, uh, the, and another great fact, it is when the ivory cotton fell down, and now all those countries were behind the uh, iron curtain, huh? Russia, Czechoslovakia, Poland, now they are with us. And even China, communist country, she is everywhere. It is everywhere. <laughs> and the Chinese dragon is everywhere. That means, we, of course, uh, the regime is not the same. It is a communist regime. But in fact, when we look at them, see, the way they live, if you go to Shanghai, and you go to the, those uh, big cities, you see, oh, it's that same, like America. You go to Dubai, in the desert, and they have a city like New York. Huh? So that is, a, a, the, we are influenced by international politics. And, you know, uh, we cannot today settle a problem alone. It's impossible. What happened in Yemen now, today, huh? imply a lot of countries. What happened in Nigeria, what happened in, in Syria, 
and like we can we, we there is no more possibility of isolation. A third globalization it is a communication. Uh, first with telegraph, huh? Morse. And after that with telephone, radio, not huh? television, hmm? and after the internet. That that is it, it is a it is a phenomenon very recent in the history. And even in this class here, look, who are you? <laughs> Vietnamese, Nigerian, American, Canadian, you know, even American from Ireland, American from Germany, American from Ukraine. You know, we, we live in a, in a situation of communication and because of that, we are also now uh, in a globalization of culture. Uh, a good example of that is to wear pants. <laughs> now, almost everywhere in the world, except a few countries, everywhere, uh, nothing like Thai, and culture. Uh, movies. Hmm? McDonald. McDonald is in Moscow. McDonald is in China. McDonald is in Vietnam. Yes. Oh, in Vietnam also. Wow. 2014. So you are McDonaldized. <laughs> you know, it, it it's interesting to see. We are it, it, the the fact that we have it, the the world of internet, the world of movies, newspaper, uh, radio, television. We are in contact with the other, and consequence, our culture is influenced by what we learn. Huh? Yes, brother? Do you ever feel, like, <laughs> feel that there is like maybe a certain point to where something, we can't grow or globalize anymore? <laughs> that you kind of, everyone hits a wall, like McDonald's, once they get in every, <laughs> every place, every country, they, they can't really grow bigger, and but, you know, there is, I, I would say there is a limit. If we see now the limit of McDonald's, you think McDonald's is making less benefit now than before because of the concurrence of other uh, Subway <laughs> and, uh, and uh, Domino Pizza. And, you know, all those, uh, yeah, not, not only here. I, I was in France last, uh, three years ago, just uh, close to the church where I, I, I was saying the Mass. There was a Domino Pizza, but not with car, but with uh, motorcycle uh, to, 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 to deliver the pizza. Uh, I, I think, the, the, you know, the, the problem, I, in fact, the cult culture here and communication depend on the economy. And, and there is a, a time when the economy is saturated. If you have too many stores, for example, in Montreal, I told that to you, Target, build new, huge store. But the population is not sufficient to satisfy all those stores. So after two years, Target is obliged to close the store and they lost millions of dollars. That is a saturation picture, okay? Uh, I think there is a limit to that. <laughs> and the limit is attached to many factors. The limit of, uh, uh, can be attached to the phenomenon of the market itself, market is saturated. It can be also attached to the resistance of people to that international culture. For example, uh, in communist country before 1990, on the radio you listen to American music. They play American music, capitalist music. <laughs> you know. But we can resist, we can say, for example, in Canada, there is a, a law and for the uh, radio, you must give at least a, a, a certain number of music written, composed in Canada. You know? Otherwise, you lose your license as a, re a radio station. So there they, they, they can be some, uh, some decision to, f to protect the culture. And, and, and the church insists on that. John Paul II insists a lot on, on culture, the respect of the culture. Why? Because the culture is the vehicle carrying values. 
your the folklore, the music, the dance, uh, the, the theater, all those things in the country, uh, mythology, legends, all that carries some values. And if you lose that, then you risk to, use your, to lose your identity and to adapt a, a universal culture that is no more your own proper culture. So that is the challenge, and the church insists on that. John Paul II uh, respect the culture, enculturation. Don't try to make every man, every, every man an American or a, or a Canadian or a British or a, a Chinese. You know? have to respect every culture. But it's interesting, like our Olympic Games in, in the Shanghai, uh, the, the, the opening celebration, Chinese try to prove that China is made with a, a rainbow of culture. And they presented this 50, 57 different cultures in their country with their uh, traditional uh, suit, with their dance, with their song, with their music, you know. Because, uh, you know, the respect of culture for me is very, very important because it is uh, there we find the values of the family, the respect of the old people, uh, the, the, the respect of the ancestor, the link with the, 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 the country, etc. Okay? Now, <laughs> the next question. Um, is it a new reality? Is, is uh, the globalization something uh, very recent? Well, we saw that even from Marco Polo, we began to globalize, but it was very, very, very uh, light globalization. Huh? But we can say that uh, today, globalization, since about maybe uh, 30 years, huh? 40 years, began to, to, to be, uh, to be uh, uh, a reality, huh? and it, it, that, that progress of globalization is due, uh, in fact, of communication, especially communication. Economy depends on communication. You know, in economy, you have production, you have consumption, and you have between distribution. Huh? I produce a pro uh, chairs, but I, somebody wants to buy my chairs, but I must take my chairs from here, carry them to the consumer. We call that distribution, and that is the market. So the market implies distribution. And to distribute, we need means of distribution. What are the means of distribution? They are car, truck, plane, ship, and roads, bridges, all that are means of distribution. So we develop more and more communication. Because we develop more and more communication, we develop economy. Yes. <laughs> so you're saying that it is like a globalization is a new, new thing? They knew, no, from even the time of the Raman, there was some exchange. What it was only around the Mediterranean uh, Sea, Europe. Huh? Now, globalization, globe, globe, what is the, the meaning of globe? The planet. Huh? When you speak about the globe, it is the planet. That means today the economy is at the level of the planet, not at the level of Europe, not at the level of Canada, United States, and Mexico, at the level of the whole planet. The whole planet. Even in South America, even in in uh, in Australia, they are influenced by American music, huh? and even in America, we are influenced by the Italian pizza. No, Italian pizza was created in Naples, in New and now it is a almost American product. No, it's Italian. <laughs> you know, French fries. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, we must be aware of that. Look on me out to you. Where everything you have here is well made, you know? <laughs> Vietnam, China, like Bangladesh, you know? It's interesting. It look at what you have in your room. The origin of, of, of everything you have in your room. We, nobody can say, I buy only Canadian. 
You cannot say, I buy only American. No. I buy glo globalism huh? in an international way. Everyone is now influenced by that reality. But it is written at, at, the, at the point of view of the globalization. A globalization, I mean, every part on the earth depends on an environment. We are affected now by what is happened in Syria. What happened? Why? Because as Americans, you have to pay for that. You have to pay taxes for that. You have members of your family, they go there and they fight, and someone, they, they die. Uh, someone of your state, Massachusetts, some, uh, Connecticut, uh, someone died, and we see the, the flag uh, half staff. Huh? We are affected. We, we cannot live alone. Impossible. The Monroe Doctrine is something of the past. But, but the tendency is, is always a, a kind of fight. Huh? Politics and economy, they are struggle. Huh? Essentially, politics is a fight. Economy is a fight. Competition. Huh? Those who want to globalize and those who want to uh, centralize and, and stay more between them, you know, in a, in a limited, uh, limited place. So we have the two tendencies. And the two tendencies are in economy and they are in politics. So when they say, don't bother, we should stop everything with the, uh, the Middle East. We should ignore the Middle East. Well, that is a tendency. Okay, take, take, let us take back all our ship, all our people. The others say, no, we have to send people. <laughs> because it is our interest to be there, to defend our interests, you know. Politics is a combat. Economy is a combat. I will say even communication is a combat. Look at the company huh, controlling your phone. The Verizon, uh, ATT, the, and they are constantly on television, they fight one another. No, it's not true. Or oh, they say Advil is not good, Tylenol is better. Oh, no, no, Tylenol. Advil is good, not Tylenol. Oh, no, no, no Advil, no Tylenol, I leave. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fight, it's a competition. Um, <clears throat> now, a word about, uh, okay. I go to page uh, four in the text of, uh, of Mr. Hakuluk. Uh, at the, at the top, huh? uh, uh, the entry of China and India in the world. That is a very big, uh, important. China, 40 years ago, was a, like a third world country, and now it's a dominant country. India, India is a very powerful country now. You know, when you have a problem with a computer, you say, card, such a number, 8000, who answer you? An Indian. <coughs> and now, uh, the, the, the many hospitals, many cities, many companies, all the, the paper, you know, to write, to fill the, they send that by to internet to those countries, and they do the job, and they send you back the, the result of that, you know. We are interdependent continually. Okay. Uh, <coughs> of course, we must recognize that at a political point of view, economic point of view, communication, uh, culture, the dominance was, uh, uh, was uh, United States and Europe. Uh, because why? Because they are the most industrialized. Up to 30 years ago, 40 years ago, now Russia is very powerful, and now China. And soon India, very, de very developed India. Uh, yeah. So it is a new reality, huh? and you have to live in that reality. <laughs> so imagine if a country is sick, the other country are affected by the sickness. If Europe is not in good shape, America will suffer with that. China will suffer. Why? Because if you have less money in your pocket, what is the consequence of that? You buy less. If you buy less, the other will produce less. And if the other produces less, what happened? It will become poorer. <laughs> there was a crisis. You know, we are dependent one on other. Here, for example, the rich. 
You, the rich, are rich because the poor buy their product, no? If you stop buying product and say, okay, I will have my garden, I will never buy from a, a Monsanto. Finished. No more Monsanto. Imagine if every American said that Monsanto died. It is what Gandhi did huh? in, 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 Great, in India. Okay? So we are, <coughs> we are in a, a, one, one family, we can say. And the, the church represents humanity as a family. We are dependent like in a family. Huh? In a family, we are dependent materially, we are dependent also uh, morally. I give you an example. Like, I know a family, a very good family. The mother is like, they are about 10 children. And one of the members of the family was accused for corruption and perjury. He's condemned for one year in prison. The family is affected by that, no? The Catholic Church was affected by, the, by those who were accused by pedophilia. So, we, you know, it's important also, sometimes we think only about economy, about this is also the honor of the country. Nobody, no country wants to be accused. For example, Turkey today, you know, does not want to accept that the, there was a genocide of the Armenian. They don't want to accept that. The reputation of the country, no? So it's, it's normal, no? So we, <coughs> we are interdependent. So the new reality uh, is that uh, more and more huh, we are uh, influence, we cannot put a, a wall and say, don't listen to the music. The music will pass up on the wall. Huh? It's the same in education. You know? We cannot take a child and say, you will stay at home. So if you stay at home, you will never commit a mistake. You will never um, be killed by a car. You, you, know? <laughs> you have to communicate. It, it, is, it is a necessity. Huh? Okay. Um, so in the middle of the page, uh, today the, the it takes of God's human space. Huh? The human race is involved in a new stage of history. The concept, etc. Huh? Um, it says, profound and rapid changes are spreading by degrees around the whole world. That was written in 1965, 50 years ago. Huh? Triggered by the intelligence and creative energies of man, these changes recoil and rebound upon him, upon his decision and desire, both individual and collective, and upon this manner of thinking and acting with respect to things and to people. It is, it, is, it is true that we don't think now the same way we thought 50 years ago. We don't appreciate people the same way we did 50 years ago, 50 years ago. Because we are in contact, and the more we know others, the more we discover their value, the more we discover also their limitation, also, huh? their problem, etc. I continue. Huh? Upon this manner of thinking and acting, look at the influence of capitalism in the world. One on, uh, 150 years ago in, in Africa, there was no capitalism. But capitalism enter and now the structure of the economy of many countries in, Cam in Africa, like Cameroon, is a capitalistic uh, structure. But it was no capitalistic structure. But the globalization is influencing, influencing a lot. Huh? Even uh, religious life. Even religion. We cannot live now the same way we lived 50 years ago. I give you an example. I was a brother. We were 300 brothers in the province. We have four cars. We have uh, one for one high school, and one for the prevention, one for uh, the, the, the brother in charge of vocation, and a, a, a kind of truck van with four, for 400. Today, almost everyone in activity has a car. And he can go many, many places. Imagine if I don't have a car here, we'll have a car. I have to use only Connecticut transportation. <laughs> I will be very limited in my activity, in my contact with people. So the more you have contact with others, the more your way of thinking change. 
the, the, the children today in every country in Africa don't think the same way that their grandfather. Their grandfather, they have no direct contact with television, with internet. Today, the little Cameroonian, they have television, they have phone, iPhone, and they have iPad, and they communicate with the whole world. That, that our way of judging the values of things is changing because of that. The value of looking at the family. We are influenced by that mentality of materialistic mentality because we must be aware that all that huh, send not the value, spiritual value, they send materialistic value. In our world is beginning more and more materialistic. Huh? You know, it's not only communism who preaches materialism. Capitalism essentially preaches capital materialism. Because economy is a blind science. Huh? It's not, there is nothing above economy, except economy itself. Huh? If the government is there, it's only to control, to help. You know? okay. So, uh, so uh, cultural and social transformation. And re that is important. Repercussion in religious life. Do we have the same way to practice our faith now that we have 50 years ago? 50 years ago, there was no television. No. So when the priest in the, in the village was preaching, it was the most important source of information in the village, was the priest and the teacher. Today, the priest preached 15 minutes. It's too long sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but people listen to television five hours a day, 35 hours a, a week. Is it possible that we, we have the same way of practicing our faith 50 years ago than now? No. The problem of family, divorce. For example, 50 years ago, divorce was not, it was not considered as a good thing. It was very rare. But now, divorce is almost uh, like a ticket of bus change. Huh? The consequence, the value of family, the value of marriage, complete. You know, we must be aware of that. We live in a society and the value change, change. Why? Because of globalization. We cannot have not a pure mentality of a Polish, a pure mentality of a Russian, a pure mentality of a Vietnamese, a pure mentality as a Canadian. We are influenced by all the rest of the world, no? I am sure in Vietnam you play American music. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure that in the United States you play Vietnamese music, <laughs> except in, in Cromwell. Okay. <laughs> I go to the next paragraph. Globalization is important because of the prospect for good, but also for ill in a large scale. Huh? It is especially important for Catholic who in an American, uh, who is American, because of the central role United States in globalization. The United States is the leading force of globalization in all its aspects, business, politics, communication, and culture. Indeed, given these tendencies to parachialism, that need to, uh, to, to be, t we have a tendency, United States, uh, to, 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 to ignore uh, and we saw that in the first war, we saw that in the second war. That tendency now is overcome by or op up or, um, openness to other countries. But there is always a tendency to use all that for our own and interest. And we intervene when there is some interest. That is the doctrine of, doctrine of John Stuart Mill. Huh? I go to American need to pay particular attention to globalization. Huh? As you can read that by yourself. Huh? So the, the, you know, the role of the class is not to give a complete explanation, but to make you aware of the problem. To make you aware that we are interdependent. Not only for economy, but for thinking. We are interdependent even for religious life. In, for example, 50 years ago in Peru, in Brazil, there was no American sect. Everybody was Catholic. Now, in Brazil, 25% of the population now 
belong to a sect. Why? Because of the global decision. People now they can leave, they can you have a plane in a few hours, you are there, you give a conference, you come back. You know? The mobility of population is incredible today. Because of that, not only the population, but the product the thing about it. every day you see boxes on the table, no? Mm -hmm. Boxes are there. You can call, you can send a mail to some, something in China or something in France, and you will see that. If you just, uh, I remember some, some seminary, they are priests, no? they decided to buy a chalice for their organization through internet. They found, a ch uh, one, they found a chalice in France, a old chalice, very beautiful. You know, that is an example of global decision. <laughs> and for, even for marriage. Incredible but true. Someone they marry through the internet. Huh? Yeah, yeah. there's some case like that. Two brothers, they marry two sisters through the internet. They corresponded for years. Finally, they, they met, they say, hey, and, and they, 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 they engaged to marry. We are so influenced by that. Inter inter internet. International, huh? international. Imagine I, I, I give my class here, and, and when my brother Jack put that on the on the uh, on the web uh, in Vietnam, in Philippines, they can follow my class. Hmm? <laughs> that is, think about the Pope. Uh, Fifty years ago, when Pius the Twelve or John the Twenty Third said something. Okay, we use at that time. At the time of Benedict, uh, of Benedict the 15, or Pius the 10, you know, when Pius the 10 wrote the text, it took weeks before the text was sent. Huh? Now the Pope says uh, homily during the Mass. After the Mass, the homily is already in the whole world. <laughs> that is important for us. Why? Because we should use that as a mean of evangelization. Evangelization today is not local. I know the missionary who went to Vietnam, or the first who came to Canada, but today is, is universal. When the Pope speaks, it is everywhere in the world. Maybe except in North Korea, because nobody has the right to have a radio. <laughs> So um, I go now to, is it good or not? Well, here you have <coughs> critics of, uh, page uh, five, huh? critics of globalization argue that, opposition. so they give here argument against globalization. First, you have that, huh? represent a revival of cutthroat, that means laissez-faire capitalism. The danger, what? The excess, you know, the excesses of capitalism in France, in New Great Britain, in the uh, United States, at the beginning, they are applied now to other countries. You saw it on television yesterday, <coughs> presented a, a manufacturer in Bangladesh where the women were working. Uh, uh, it was for textile, and uh, all that uh, fell down. Uh, and one, I don't know, uh, more than 100 women were kept uh, made that. They have a little salary, they work 15, 12, 15 hours a day for almost nothing, you know. Secondly, it is an expression of political, cultural imperialism. The danger that someone imposed to other, you know, the Ra Russia. What is Putin, what is the desire of Putin? Is to stop, to oppose, to control the influence of the Western world. They don't want to be assimilate to the Western world. They want to be, to, to, to stay Russian. And when you look at the map of Russia, it starts from Atlantic to the Pacific. It's a huge country. A huge country. Yeah. Third, well, uh, why does the gap worldwide between the rich and the poor? We saw that, you remember, 82% controlled by 20%. The situation is not, is not better, it's worse now. Maybe to this 90 percent. 
Because the more money you have, the more powerful means you can acquire to make more money. And when a company like Westinghouse um, lay, uh, leaves the United States to go to, uh, to China, it's not only for the good of the Chinese. It is not good for their pocket. Hmm. The difference is, when Westinghouse works in the United States, Westinghouse has to pay taxes to the United States. Now Westinghouse works in China, make television in China, he does not to pay taxes to the United States. Okay. Armed workers in the developed nation, the, the abuse of workers, little salary, a condition of work, they are not, they have no union. Yesterday, the president uh, in Pakistan, women wanted, they want to have a union and they are beaten by the police, they are beaten by people, they don't want to install union. So they continue to be work, they, they are like slaves. They are not workers, they are slaves. It's a new kind of slavery. Huh? Destroy the environment to make money. For example, you are right in Brazil, you are right in Cameroon, you cut huge trees. Those trees are two, three hundred years. They are the lungs of the earth, but you want to, to, to put uh, to uh, corn, huh? to cultivate corn, because corn will give you money, because corn will go in the car of the automobile, huh? through ethanol. But you destroy, the, and that is the problem, ecology. And you know, when we destroy the forest, we create erosion. Erosion. <coughs> erosion, that is the worst. Why? Because the water takes off all the good soil and you have only the, the rocks. And that is the reality, erosion. You see, the, the, the desert is always expanding. Why? Because there is erosion. When you suppress trees, you suppress plants, uh, and you have less water, the water arrives, drink that, and you have after that only, it is what happening now in prison. Because the, 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 the absence of trees, of plants, but to fix the soil, to fix the good ground is no more there. And the consequence of that, for example, we saw that in Colorado recently, even in British Columbia, huh, landslide. Because there is nothing to stay, to stabilize the, 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 the soil. And when it is raining, the whole mountain is crushing a village, crushing a town. You know? that, is, that is why and many times it is to make money. Okay, to make money is not, is not a sin. Uh, to make money when you destroy uh, the nature. Huh? Okay, next page. So there is a different attitude huh, in front of that. You have uh, some, uh, I, I, that is a globalization may indeed inevitable. Uh, we cannot say we stop. We cannot stop a globalization. That, that is, it is forever. Our globalization is forever. Not only is forever, now we are searching some place to install colonies on Mars. <laughs> Because we say, and we have maybe a day to, to go there. So we are, you know, faced to a, pro a problem is not to deny the problem. Globalization is there and we cannot stop that. Why? Because can you stop the usage of your iPod, of your, I, your iPhone, of your uh, computer? Can you stop using a car or flying with, in a, with a Southwest or a United Airlines? No, that is a fact we have not to control. The best is to use the, for the best what we have. That globalization can be used for the best, can be used for the worst. And that depends on the will of the people. Right? Okay? So is the reason why the church, and not the, you know, the next institution of the Pope, what would be the subject? Ecology. Pope is preparing an encyclical which we published at the beginning of July, and it is about ecology. It is a great responsibility we have in front of uh, the nature. Huh? Okay. 
So, a uh, positive aspect, next paragraph. Okay, we, we can protest, for example, we can try to ignore that. A good example, they have the Amish huh, in Pennsylvania. Huh? Well, they, 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 they try to live huh, in, the, in the way they live in the 16th, 17th century. But in fact, it is not true because they are obliged to deal with people, to use money. Not a single Amish will accept to uh, only uh, some prayer for his, his cup. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he has to American money, no? So we, 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 cannot, we cannot escape that problem. Even hermit, they go, they go to the mountain, they go to pray alone, to live alone. They are not alone. They, they smell huh, the air. And that if the air is uh, polluted, but they, they smell polluted air, you know. And they plant. And if there is acid rain, their acid rain will affect their carrot and their potatoes. You know? We are in that situation. Think about Chernobyl. Chernobyl, when the, the nuclear power exploded, that affected the whole Europe. Even in France, they discovered vegetables with radioactivity. We are, a, we are in the big village, a big village. So one may distinguish between globalization as a mean or instrument and globalization as the use of, the, of those means. Now, globalization as mean always trade among persons, easy communication, free political association, all that is good. There is good aspect on, you know, as a source of information, for example, medication. Globalization favor good health. Because the medication used in the country can be used in many countries. Well, <coughs> I continue. It represents just one more instance of the growth of human technology. In fact, the progress of globalization is the consequence of the progress of technology, of science. So that is good. <coughs> we cannot say globalization essentially is evil. No. They are something good in that. The, the, uh, for example, the access to knowledge. Today, if you have a computer, you can access to information, to study. You can sp spend eight, ten hours a day studying. You can do that during your vacation. You, know? you can go to the beach uh, and put a hat, protect with glasses, and have your computer on the beach. We see that. You go on the beach, you see people with their iPad. Huh? I'm not sure they study. <laughs> but they can't study. <laughs> that means that, that, that is a new phenomenon. No? Who were able 200 years ago to buy a dictionary? And today, with the internet, we have thousands of dictionary information. Okay. <laughs> now, next paragraph. To, be, uh, to believers, this point is certain considered uh, in itself this human activity accord with God's will. Uh, what is the take of God's human space? Very important. Uh, for men created to God's image receive a mandate of sub to subject to himself the earth and all the content and to govern the world with justice and holiness. A mandate to relate himself to the totality of things, to him and God, who was uh, to be acknowledged as the Lord of Creator of all. That means we can see all that globalization as a mean to realize the mission of man on earth, the dominion. And God gave man the dominion about, uh, over the earth. And we can see today we are at a very high level of dominion, domination about the material thing, very high. I continue. So, uh, even cultural unity throughout the world, the Council Father teach, although not homogeneity, ought to be welcome. Well, what to welcome first? As making possible greater community among persons. I told you when I was uh, 19 year, 9 or 10 years old when I saw for the first time in my life a black man walking in my street. 
it was like someone coming from the Mars. An alien. I, he was a E.T. Today, here, look at the class, here. It's incredible. See, the, 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 the change in, in, in the relationship with person is absolutely incredible. Vietnam, Canada, United States, Nigeria, South America, Colombia, Australia, South Africa. We are that in a seminary here. United Nations, we should have called the United Nations Seminary. <laughs> and you go to Rome, you go to Paris, you have students from, sometimes in your class, from many, 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 many countries. Huh? So that, that is it. It is something positive if we realize that we constitute a great community. What astonished me, I, I, I go, for example, to another country. And I discovered that that man, that woman, that person, those person, you know, they, we are the same. They are my brother, they are my sister. And more and more I, I experiment that, I realize we are a huge, a great, great family. And when we realize that, immediately our relations are completely different. You go to the subway in New York. You are there, he is there, she is there. Don't look at her, don't look at him, mind your business. Otherwise you have a problem. But when you arrive, you communicate with people. And immediately that changed completely. To be able to, when I, I visited the country, but I like to, to talk with people, to be in relation with them. I prefer them that to visit New Zealand. That is a good experience. As a future priest, as a future sister, working, it's important, a future layman, to have that openness to every kind, every culture. My brother is not an enemy, he is a friend. If you start with the hypothesis, the other is an enemy, like Jean Paul Sartre, the other is the hell, hell is the other. Huh? We change completely your relation. But if I have the we have the same family, like the teaching of the church, immediately I meet someone from any country, immediately I can respect him. I am attentive to him, I listen to him, I want to help him. It is beautiful to see sometime after earthquake. Well, after earthquake, what happened? You have Chinese, American, Australian, uh, African, they work together to help people, to save lives. That is, that is globalization. The good aspect of globalization. Huh? Share culture wealth. We take benefit. For example, uh, you are in China, you are in, uh, in Cameroon or you are in Brazil and you use a pad, iPad. They use the genius of another in another country. You know, we are continually using, taking benefit of the work of the genius of people of other countries. You use a radio, you use a television, you use a telephone, uh, you use a car, you use a plane. All that invention comes from many, many, many countries. So we are, we should appreciate uh, that the fact now we can contact people not as enemy, but as friend of brothers. But the problem, some ideology, and they break that. Huh? But, uh, the next, next paragraph, those are uh, against, huh? against globalization. What is the first reason? Because, you know, man is everywhere the same. Greed is everywhere. Huh? Envy is everywhere. Jealousy is everywhere. Instinct of domination is everywhere. Lust is everywhere. And stealing is everywhere. Lying is everywhere. It's not proper to a, a culture, it's not proper. We find that everywhere. So if we find those vices uh, in a small scale, then we'll find that in a large scale. That means greed will be everywhere. And, 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 and those who are uh, the desire to control money, but they will use that not only on the local, uh, national state, scale, 
but the international and world scale. That is the problem. Uh, it, that is sometimes people have to fight against injustice. And it, it is a moral challenge, it is a moral combat. But the, 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 cause, the cause is not in globalization. The cause of injustice is not in the fact of globalization. The cause of injustice is in the heart of man. Sometimes we, we accuse globalization. No, it is the, the one who is abusing other. It is not because of globalization. It's the same for a gun. A gun in itself is not to kill a person. But I can use that to kill a person. You know? Globalization is a mean. It's a powerful means for economy, for progress, but it can be also a mean to regress, a mean to dominate, a mean to enslave people. Huh? Sweatshop, for example. Huh? So the possibility of, of abuse is huge. Why? Because the mean is huge. When you are in the city, you can abuse maybe 200 workers. If you are in the mondialization, in the globalization, you can abuse 2, billion, 2 million people. Because it is larger. But it is not because of globalization. It's the same for movie. In itself, uh, theater, cinema theater is, is not even. It is a tool. Huh? A tool depends. The, the, when the something is evil, it's not because of the tool itself. A knife is good to cut. I can use a knife to kill. Okay. But the misconception of, uh, of, I will not insist too much on that. You know, <laughs> they say, uh, if, you know, if you have a little pie and you have a little piece, suppose you, in a country, there are many rich people, but a little part for the poor. You remember, 80% control and here, 20%. Okay. If you say, okay, I will globalize that, I will put that pie at the level of the universe. That means I will, uh, uh, the, the scale of my uh, organization will not be a national scale, will be international and world scale. What will happen? The pie will be bigger. And the pie being bigger, if you have a bigger pie, you will add more in. That means that theory is, it, it, it is interesting. It is, globalization apparently is hurting people, but in fact is allowing people to have more. For example, if we, a company goes to Bangladesh or to another country to install a, uh, China, China took benefit of that. China took benefit of that. Why? Because the American, German, huh? French company, they invest in China. So because they invest in China, their market, instead of being one billion people, now it is two billion people. One billion with Europe and America, and one billion with China. So the market is higher. Even if the proportion is the same, 20%, the people, are, instead of receiving only a little pie, they will receive more. That is the theory saying that that is, that is evil in globalization. Even we can improve the, the destiny of those we consider as the, the third class, huh? the poor. When we speak about poor in the United States, is it the same thing as we speak about poor in, uh, in Haiti, for example. A poor here is a rich there. Or you say, oh, I'm poor, I don't have a car. Then you say, oh, I'm poor, I don't have shoes. It's different, huh? You say, oh, I'm poor, I don't have uh, the, the uh, 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 big screen, 60 inches. Oh, I am poor, I have only uh, 36, you know. I am poor. Well, yeah, they, they don't have electricity. You know? So that, in fact, globalization is, 
of course, it is making the problem bigger, but at the same time, it making also the advantage bigger. That means China, for me, China is a, is a good example. The Chinese, before they have a little economy, and after that, when they join with other countries, they begin more and more and more and more and more and more. So the pie for the people is bigger and bigger. And now in China, the problem is traffic. Chinese, now they can buy car. Imagine 50 years ago, they were not able, as difficult to buy a bicycle. And today, they can buy car. So, so many cars that they are jammed. Imagine Shanghai, 9 million, 19 million people. It's horrible. <laughs> you know, when we become rich, we become obese. Huh? We can become obese here, but we become obese in the traffic. In New York, it's an obese city. Hmm? You can, uh, if you are in the, <laughs> the traffic, you are jammed, or in Hartford at 5.30 in the afternoon, or 8.30, 8 in the morning, you are jammed, because there are too many. But, but it was not like that. 50 years ago. That means more and more, those who are considered or poor, they are not be taking more and more benefit of that. So poverty is something relative. Something relative. That means the situation of the poor in the United States uh, improved in regard to what it was 50 years ago. If you look, watch the picture uh, of the crisis in 1929, we see all those people waiting two times a day to have food. And today, we don't see that. The poor are those who cannot go to Florida, they cannot buy a car, uh, they, they, they cannot... Uh, and, and there are many degrees in poverty. You are the homeless, and they are those who cannot afford what they would like to have. Uh, oh, I'm poor because I cannot afford that. It's not poverty. If you eat well, <laughs> okay? So what I want to say, uh, not, if we look at globalization, we should look at the old, the old globalization. What is good, what is not good. And what is the good is very important because we have to correct that. For example, the sweatshop. Uh, the sweatshop in Bangladesh, the sweatshop uh, in many countries in India. Of course, we cannot approve that. So we can favor. Uh, our government can have a put some condition. Huh? Okay. <coughs> um, bon. So we can read. Now the two real threats of the globalization, page nine. The first threat is the abuse of worker. I spoke about that, huh? sweatshop. Huh? The abuse of worker. Uh, in, fa in fact, in, the, in those countries now, they are in the same situation as that the worker were in 1881 in the United States when the first time they wanted to create labor union, they were not able. Even the Supreme Court says that the labor union were anti-constitutional. Do, do you believe that? They said the labor union were anti-constitutional, like they decided that abortion is good. <laughs> so that's the first. Uh, the first huh? uh, and the second, The second threat is that the page, I, I lost my page. Yes, on page uh, 10. <laughs> it is the impoverishment of culture. Impoverishment of culture. And uh, Mr. Pakuruk, he passed that from the case huh? when the young American, I told that to you, huh, were uh, celebrating with me young Mexican, and the young Mexican, they sang, they sang, they sang. Finally, they said, you American, do you sing? And they, they, they sang a Christmas song. <laughs> 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 the culture, and that is a danger. No? I told that, I, and John Paul II wrote an encyclical about that, you know? John Paul II wrote an encyclical about uh, inculturation. It is at the occasion of the 800th anniversary of the death of Saint Nicholas and Cyril. 
and the, the, <coughs> the apostle of the Slav. And in that encyclical, he insists on we must respect the culture of a country. We can export our <laughs> uh, medication, our technology, our but respect the value of the people. The most important is not to have, is to be. No? The value of a man is not because he has a big car, because he has a big mansion, big house. No, because he is a man, a virtuous man, an awesome man, an intelligent man, a free man. That is the value of a, a people. And when you are, uh, if you have to work abroad, or if you have to receive immigrant, because the proper name is, when you receive immigrant in the United States or in Canada, we have to be attentive to respect and not to impose immediately to destroy their culture. Because if they can afford us, they can bring us very good insight. For example, in many countries, the respect of the whole people. If I was in Africa, I would consider as a wise man. Mm -hmm. Because my hair, hair are white. <laughs> And I am young enough. <laughs> yes, that is the respect of the old people. It's, it's, yeah, what we do with old people? We put them in the ivory tower, or we, we try to short their life by an euthanasia. Euthanasia, for me, is, is a key that will provoke the death of millions of people. The same as abortion provoked the death of millions of babies. We don't realize the danger of that, those decisions. Because when you open the door like that, uh, the gangster can push the foot, he open the door completely. That happened for the abortion. Not only that, now we are obliged to pay for abortion, according to the law. The poor sister, uh, the, the, the sister, the little sister of the poor, you know, I don't know that, and they are in Supreme Court now, because they don't want to pay for abortion and, and, and birth control for their employees, because it is against their conscience. We open the door a little bit. You open the door to divorce, no? Open, you know? <laughs> so that is uh, a taste, if you want, of globalization. No? And the best way it is to travel. If you have to travel, for example, I'm sure the Vietnamese who come here, they, have, they, they, they realize a little bit about this globalization. When we stay only in our country, we don't realize that. So I wish, huh? I wish you will have the occasion to work abroad. Maybe six months, maybe one year, huh? maybe a few, uh, few vacations. To, to, uh, not as a tourist on the beach, drinking whiskey and... Uh, and uh, fuming, uh, smoking uh, marijuana. Huh? But, but as uh, I saw on television, EWTN, the air organization, who people, they go to Jamaica to work with the brother of the poor, you know? That is yeah. very, very good. So I did. You did that? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you can inform all that. Did you take benefit of that? Uh, I, yeah, I say it's partially why I'm here. Ah, interesting. Uh, because that open you to, uh, no, the, for me, it, it, you know, it's the, it's the same for a, a child. If the child stay always in your uh, house, uh, playing like that, he has no contact with others. We have to have contact with others. And today with planes, uh, with airport, with the ship, it is not difficult to, they have many Catholic organizations, and that is, that is also an organization. You have uh, the Jesuit, they have a good organization for the Jesuit to prepare a student at the level of university to work one year, two years, either here in the United States or abroad. Well, it's a suggestion. Because I work many times with uh, volunteers in Africa, from France, from Germany, from Switzerland, that change their life. That change their way of looking at reality. Or here, even here, if you work for soup kitchen, for example, huh? you work for the poor, that change your mentality also. We need to be in contact with uh, the most people we can find, especially the poor. Why? Because it is the priority. Okay, thank you. I have to fill the form. Thank you for your attention.